Happy 147th uh, to our country, Craig Simpson, Darren Pang, and Greg Millen. We'll focus in on some belly. of the... No. What's that? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> You're waiting for that one to happen. It was inevitable. Uh, as Darren mentioned, we'll focus and go sort of around the horn on the uh, on the Canadian teams. These guys are still enjoying themselves. So Simmer yeah. has drilled down on the Edmonton Oilers. Well, I think it's a real hot topic, the changes that Craig McTavish uh, promised when he took over as general manager. Wasn't able to make all of them last year that he would have liked. But I think it's pretty clear that they want to transform this uh, the look of this team and you know you go back to the Nikitin deal uh, another big body six foot four Teddy Purcell six foot three this is a team that needed some size and they've addressed it uh, at times you know in a place like Edmonton you're going to have to either give too much term or too much money I think there's been a couple instances where you could say that Nikitin too much money but they bought the term back and I think Mark Fain is a guy though that to me is about the right number on both it's the right term it's the right number and I know fans in Edmonton maybe say well it's not the sexy pick but it's another guy that brings some stability when you look at the back end of the Edmonton Oilers over the last couple of years part of it with bad goaltending and not getting a save but the one thing they didn't have is a calming influence and now you hope with a big body of Nikitin playing a certain way Fain is that uh, he's that type of player that can control the game down uh, I think with Pouliot obviously a little risky with the term but this is a guy who's going to have a great opportunity and yet again another big body so I think overall the challenges of free agency not that easy to get done in Edmonton I think Craig McTavish did an excellent job. bringing in those blue liners does that mean perhaps Jeff Petrie has played his last game as an oiler could be because you need a little different dynamics and he's something that if another team needs a little mobile guy that maybe isn't that physical they can grab him clearly the Oilers had too much of the same both at forward and on the back end and that might open up a spot to make it drafted deal. size in the weekend in yeah. uh, Leon Dreisaitl of uh, Prince Albert Montreal Canadiens Interesting, you know, a team that had a lot of success, so you always kind of want to watch them to see, do they just stay still, or do they tweak a bit, or do they go for a big splash? Well, I like what they did, because they basically just tweaked their lineup where they needed to do it. Manny Mahalter, eh, not a big signing by any means, but a great face-off guy, a tremendous story, has some character, fourth-line position, he'll help, there's no doubt about that. They get Mike Weaver re-signed, another player who did an awful lot of legwork for the Montreal Canadiens on their blue line in the playoffs, we all watched, he blocked shots, they love him, he sacrifices for the team, good signing. But an interesting signing is the defenseman Tom Gilbert, a player that I'm going to throw the Corsi number at you, he, he's above the leverage, uh, above the... 52%, I'll get that again, in terms of shot attempts towards the opposition versus towards him on a very bad team in the Florida Panthers. I know that doesn't mean much, and again, numbers, you just use them as part of a total package, but this guy's been doing this for a while in the league, mm -hmm. and he's an appealing player that I think will help with some pretty good range on the blue line, so I like that signing. Montreal didn't make a splash, but they just picked the way and, and made this day pretty successful. It's, for it's a great Corsi point about Tom Gilbert as well, because him and Brian Campbell, actually, when you look at their Corsi, was fantastic for the Florida Panthers last year. What about out west? Well, I, I think we look at the, the Calgary Flames, and, and we, we talk an awful lot about Brian Burke, but, you know, Brad Treliving's in a very um, unique spot, being a new general manager. He learned under Don Maloney. I think he's done a, a good job there. I, I was really interested about the Derek, Derek England signing and the, the amount of money. His cap hit went from 567000 a year <laughs> to $2.9 million, but... You know, there is, there is a demand for right-hand shots. So I just sent a note over to Brad just, you know, asking some of the, the key areas that he was talking about. And, and obviously a right-hand shot's important. He's got Giordano, T Brody, Butler's a UFA's a left-hand shot. Smead's a left-hand shot. Russell's a left-hand shot. The only righty is really Dennis Weidman. So England helps it there. But he's also got a little moxie to his game. and He's not afraid to back up, you know, his teammates as well. So it's going to be an interesting one there. Maybe they overpaid, but they got a guy that's going to fill a void. Uh, Mason Raymond, you know, Mason Raymond's an interesting story. Um, handles the Canadian media very well. Now it's Vancouver, Toronto, and now the Calgary Flames. And obviously a, a guy that is a good skater with the way the game is right now and gets around the ice extremely well. And then they had a big decision as well, what they're going to do with their goaltender. And I think for, for Brad Trulivin, he identified, I haven't seen a whole lot of Kerry Ramo. Is he the guy that's going to take me to the promise line? Am I going to get a, just a backup goaltender, or am I going to get a, a guy like Jonas Hiller? Well, he went off the board. He got Jonas Hiller to a two-year deal, not a lot of term. So overall, I mean, I, I, they, they lose Cammy, uh, yeah. Mike Camilleri. They lose that. That's a goal-scoring machine. There's no question they will miss that. But uh, he identified a couple of other areas. And just a quick note on Mason Raymond, who I particularly loved the first half of the season. I think most people mm -hmm. that watched the Toronto Maple Leafs did, but he fell off. Uh, he's not no. a big man, and the question, the challenge for him will be whether or not he can put a nice 82 games together for his hockey club. If he does, 
that's a pretty nice signing by Calgary. Quick thought around the table about the Vancouver Canucks. Jim Benning over the past four or five days, six, seven days, has been perhaps the busiest general manager around the NHL, whether it's trading, whether it's drafting, and today, whether it's signing. Your thoughts on what Vancouver I think did. it was an important one uh, that they've learned their lesson with the whole drawn-out goaltender saga. Uh, you, you could argue back and forth, did they get enough for Ryan Kessler? Well, maybe, maybe not. I think the most important thing, though, Benning and Trevor Lind uh, Linden going into a situation where you don't have it hanging over your head. You've got a fresh start. You've got bodies in there that want to go. And now with Miller, you get some excitement and a big push.